Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning service at Perfect Will Ministries. Anybody here glad about it this morning? I mean, is there anybody here glad about it this morning? Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand of praise. Let's give God a hand of praise. God is so good. God is so good. Welcome, welcome. We are praying for several who are out this morning who some are infirm. We bind up the spirit of infirmity right now and we lose the spirit of supernatural healing. If that's you, you or you, I decree and declare that you're healed in Jesus' name. We thank God for each and every one of you who have come on by via online to worship with us this morning. We pray also for those of our members who are um, out traveling. We pray right now that God would give them what uh, they are uh, looking for in their travel. If it's time, if it's relaxation, if they're on a mission, if they're on a business trip, that God will give them what they need, but they would uh, lend their ears to God that he might be able to speak to him. Amen? Amen. With that being said, I don't know about y'all this morning, but I woke up this morning I came in this morning. I am so excited. I promise y'all. I promise y'all. I promise y'all. If y'all just sit back and listen to God, if y'all allow him to speak to you and you attune your ears to him, I promise you he speaks very clearly. There, there are a lot of things that have been going on starting with last week in Laurel. I thought it was last week in Laurel, but God began to speak to me. All the way up until last week when I couldn't figure out why I couldn't preach the sermon I had prepared. God was preparing me for something greater. So uh, let's, let's just pray. I, I, feel, I feel just like the song is playing right now. There's a shifting in the atmosphere. You've been praying for something. You've been praying for something. And God says, I'm, I'm ready to shift the atmosphere. See, we've been through a lot of uh, 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 turbulence. We've been through a lot of, of, of adversity, but God said today, right now, the atmosphere shifts. Uh, when praise and worship comes up, you're going to feel it, uh, but as we begin to pray and worship, it's going to be demonstrated, and then when Pastor Tasty comes and bring, brings the word, that's just going to be the cherry on top. Amen? Can I get an amen? Y'all in the sack six, though, can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We invoke your presence on this day. We ask right now, Lord God, that everything, every care, every worry, every concern right now, we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. Because we can feel your presence. And right now, God, you're shifting the atmosphere. There's a shifting going on right now, Lord God. The thing that you were worried about, the thing that you were concerned about, God is lifting it and he's moving it because of your obedience. In Job 22, 28 says, because of the cleanness of your hands, even those who are not innocent shall be made whole. So we thank you right now, God. We bow down right now, God, and Holy Spirit, we invoke your presence. Have your way in this place today. Make this time that we spend to you, with you, prudent. Make it effective. We thank you, we magnify you, and we glorify your holy name, for you are shifting the atmosphere and we yield to your direction. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all say amen. 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 If you are new today, our foundational scripture is Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable or pleasing to God for this is your reasonable or proper service. And here's the part right here. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that what God's will is, is good, is pleasing, and is perfect will. Let's give God a hand praise for his finished And right now, let's do our uh, Perfect Will Ministries visions. We are contemporary, but not compromised. We envision and experience a diverse, multicultural worshiping community of spiritually mature believers, leading others into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
producing healthy families, engaging in holistic ministries to develop the community spiritually and economically and impacting the world for the glory of God. Around here we say don't give up, don't ever give up because you can win. You can win. You can win. So we say all of that to say this. We want to make sure you understand what our stable and our foundational scripture is so when you walk in you can understand what you're walking into but also you got to understand the vision. The Bible says without a vision people perish. Amen? Amen? Before we get to praise and worship I'm going to explain to you why I'm so excited. I'm going to show you that God is so good. And I'll start out by saying this because there's somebody in here who needs to hear this. Quit questioning God. Did y'all hear what I said? Quit questioning God and start trusting Him. Pastor, what are you talking about? So I'm not delusional. We've talked about it many a times. I'm not delusional enough to think that we don't question God because I've told you several times I've questioned God. I've questioned God when things got hard. I've questioned God when I lost things. I've questioned God when I lost family members. I've questioned God when I lost my parents. So I'm not delusional to think that we wouldn't question God. Even people in the Bible have questioned God. Great people in the Bible have questioned God. But here's the problem. The problem is that if you don't know and you don't have context about what's going on, is that many people that question God, even though they're saints, they question God with a rebellious and an untrusting spirit. And so what happens is you got to be careful with this because if you, if God has done all these things for you and something happens, then all of a sudden you get mad at him and you start questioning him, you got to be careful because he's the one who made you. He don't owe you nothing. Right? So, so, so God had me going over that. Um, and as he, I was going over that, he, he showed me, he said, Apostle, make sure you tell him that y'all don't have eyes to see in the future. I said before that we serve a, a, a round the corner God. When we can't see around the corner, he knows full well what's going on. And, 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 and some of, sometimes, some of y'all, some of y'all have said it this week, some of y'all said it right before y'all came to church. Some of y'all said, why God? Why, God, do you have me in this position? Why, God, did you send me here? Why, God, am I going through this? Why, God, why, God, why, God? And God may have not answered you. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I'm going somewhere, and then I'm going to turn it over to praise and worship, but here's a, here's a statement that y'all all know, and, and, and we're going to get to meet you in just a few minutes, but this is something that I've always said from the onset of Perfect Little Ministries. Don't mistake God's processing. Somebody going through processing right now. And processing is not fun. Don't mistake God's processing for punishment. So you're thinking that God's punishing you because he's not answering you. You're thinking God's punishing you because you're asking him to be there and, 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 and eradicate the situation. No, no, no. He's processing you. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. Turn with me there real quick. I'm going to insert some word. Because we're a Bible, believing Bible, receiving church. So I want you to make sure that you see the word. When you ask, say amen. Let me do that again. When you're there, say amen. 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 What y'all doing again? Isaiah, thank you, Sexto. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. And listen, God told me to show you this. You've, you've heard it before. Amen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Apostle, why are you so excited today? On last Saturday of Laurel, God began to speak to us. And I told y'all about that old experience. I'm not going to go through that again. And I said, okay, God, I see that. And I said again, I came in last week and I was ready to preach the sermon. He said, no, stay here. And I'm going like, God, why? So on Friday, I had an opportunity to go down and uh, pay my respects to Brother David Jones, who we've been Bible studying for. If you guys have not been on Bible study, you wouldn't even understand this. 
But we've been on Bible study for the last two years with this man of God. And here's why I'm so excited. So a couple of years ago when I met Dave, I met Dave at a football game. I hadn't, go, I hadn't gone to a Dell State football game in years. I went to a football game. I was talking to Coach Collin. Coach Collin introduces me. This guy has cerebral palsy. He walks all the way up the top flight of the stands to come uh, Parkinson's. He walks all the way up to the flight, top flight of the stairs to come speak with us. And we kind of talk. And Coach Collin says, this is, my, this is my guy, Apostle Frank. He used to play for me. Da, da, da. You need to become a part of our Bible study. And so, uh, and so, y'all don't understand, when I met Dave, Dave wasn't all together lovely about God. Amen. And he let me know right there, very quickly. So Dave did come on to our Bible study for a, a period, but then he started to sink in. And then when Dave started to sink into our Bible study, y'all know that's on Bible study, he was a little bit contentious. He would ask these questions, not going like, God, no, nah, I ain't even doing this. I don't have some contentious people. I'm going to shut this down. But God said, be patient. And as we were patient, it got to the point at the end of uh, the last year or so, they start coming on about 6.30, right? Start coming on and talking. But why am I so excited? Pastor, why are you so excited? Because I'm telling y'all right now, stop questioning God. And what I say, what's the rest? Start trusting God. Because what I thought was a two-year test. God said, I'm going to reveal something to you for 39 years. A 39-year lesson. All this stuff, all this preaching that you've been doing, all this talking that you've been doing, I'm going to show you. I've been testing you the whole time. Y'all heard the story that I told y'all years and years ago. I probably told it multiple times that I had a specific coach when I was at Dell State that I didn't get along with. And it wasn't on my account. The guy wasn't even my position coach. But this guy gave me half. So much to the point, I just, in my junior year, I, was, I, I, was, I lost it. I was, I was a different dude. Amen. I was a different dude. I, I, and, 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 and you talk about, thank you, uh, uh, Minister Keisha, for sending me that thing, or sending all of us that thing about humility, because that resonated. I was competitive. But when I stepped in between the lines and stepped in that field, I was a different dude. I flipped. And this guy was irking my soul. And one day I decided, that's it. I, I, I'm a man just like he is. He ain't going to keep talking to me like this. We're going to do something about it. And that day, Coach Collard pulled me to the side and said, now you're a man, do man things. Okay. Men don't handle things like that. You get ready to graduate. You get ready to mess everything up. Why am I so excited? Because on Friday, I had an opportunity to go back down to Dell State to the EH building, the Education and Management building, where I took all of my classes Back in the same theory that I produced the Three Little Pigs 39 years ago, and when I walked in, I got down there early because Coach Collick said I'm going to be setting up, I need some help. And when I walked in, Coach Collick was about where Greg was. And I was going to go see Coach Collick and his lovely wife. Uh, uh, but there was that coach that I hadn't seen in 39 years. And he was standing right in between us. And he was talking to Kramer. And in order to get to college and to the venue, I had to go past him. And God said, now what you going to do? Because when you was a little boy, when you was a young boy, you had all that hurt and you had all that anger. Now I'm going to see you past the man. And all oh, you've been preaching about forgiveness. I'm going to see what you're going to do. And so when I walked in, it was so funny because Kramer, Dwayne Henry, he re I played ball so he knows how I was back in school. Kramer's talking to this coach. And as I walk in, Kramer just stops and he goes, because Kramer got to identify, is Apostle Frank coming in? Or is that old dude Abala coming in? Because if Abala coming in, he's going to say some crazy stuff. He's going to rip it. And I couldn't understand why 39 years, all this built up anger, I never saw this man once. He's still in Delaware. I never saw him once. And God said, I ain't going to let you see him because I'm processing you. Somebody, I'm helping somebody in here because y'all got bent up anger, y'all got bent up hurt. Y'all know I told y'all the story about my grandmother, and I think that I'm over it. I tell y'all, and I'm glorifying that. But God said, I ain't finished with you yet because I'm going to test you. And as I walk up and I walk toward Coach Collin, I got to go past him. And instead of saying, I say, hey, Coach, how you going, man? 
Is everything good? And he looks at me and he says, Frank, I heard so many great things about you. I heard what you're doing in the ministry. Watch this. I heard what you've been doing in the ministry, changing people's lives. And he said, I want to come on the Bible study. And I said, Coach, you can come on the Bible study anytime. Ooh, anytime you want to, Coach. I went by him, I sat down next to Coach Collins because he and his wife, he was the one who stopped me. He and his wife knew the story. Coach Collins just looked at me, you know I go, Frank Burke, Frank Burke, Frank Burke, Frank Burke. Frank Burke, I'm gonna tell you something, Frank Burke. You are a true man of God. You are a true man of God. And I say that to say this. As soon as I left there, I called my wife. And only y'all who've been with us can understand this, y'all. A lot of y'all won't. I called my wife up and I said, I hit him. I did not hit him. I did. She said, what are you talking about? I saw that dude and I didn't hit him. I didn't cuss him out. Sister Karen, you have no, I, I, I'm going to keep saying, y'all have, have no idea how important Bible study is. That stuff you talking about when people cut you off, all that bent up anger that I wanted to say, all those years I prepared, if I saw him out in the street, he was going to get a beat down. If I saw him, where, where was I going to see him, God? Was I going to see him in the store? Was I going to see him at a game? Was I going to see him on the street? Because I'm going to let him know. And God said, no, you're not. He said, shut your mouth and be the man of God that I called you to be. And I say all that to say this, because here's the, here's the point of the matter. God is the great orchestrator. And people are always watching you. You don't even know people are watching. What are you talking about, apostle? It had to be that day. It could not have been before that day that I saw him. And as a result, Coach Collins spoke he spoke, and Coach Collins said, because his mother, Dave's mother, said, let me tell you something, Dave loved y'all so much on the Bible study. She said, he would put me off the phone to get the Bible study. She said, I heard so much about you. So Coach Collins said, Frank, would you, can you say a couple words? And they were like two minutes, I think they did one. Ooh, oh my God. Yes. Yeah, 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 give out the hand, I, I understand order. Listen, I understand when I'm out, I, I order, I obey, right? I did it in one. And then I sat down. But I let his kids know he got some beautiful kids. I let his kids know your daddy loved you. Even though you didn't see him the way you wanted to. I'm here to tell you, I saw him every week. He loved you. God allowed me to talk and speak to those kids afterwards. And it brought me right back to how come I couldn't preach last week. He said, remember that story you wanted to talk about in 2 Samuel chapter 9? about David when he became a king and he wanted to show kindness to the house of Saul and his family and he wanted to show kindness to all that stuff I talked about God said okay there they are you do the same with them you do the same with David his daughter's name was Amber and I walked up to him afterwards and I told him the story and I said you're that family is there anybody from the house of David David Jones that I can show kindness to I said, you now become my niece and you now become my nephew. Even though you're in Vegas, anything you need that I can do and help you with, I got it. So I'm here to tell somebody, y'all don't got to get excited, but I'm super excited. I'm here to tell somebody because it took 39 years for me to get that lesson. It took me two years to wonder why God was sending this man in my life. I didn't know Dave. I, had never, I, I didn't know Dave ever before. I know he was a great football player at Dell State. I knew his name, but I didn't know him. But here's the other thing. Based on his name, based on his name, based on his character, based on his body and work and what he had done with people, what is your name saying about you right now? Amen. Who will speak well of you when you go on? Who, what, what is your character? And I ain't talking, I ain't talking about the haters, because the haters are always going to have something to say. The haters are always going to say something, but I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about overall. What will people say about you outside of your earshot? In the last part, I'm going to turn it over to praise and worship that made it all come to a head. Sister Karen, I learned the lesson in Bible study. I learned a lesson as the teacher with the whole thing about being humble. I'm very competitive. I hate to lose. I'm that dude. That's why you said it was me. But over the years, I learned how to be humble. Remember what I said before. This is why. On Saturday, I go to William Penn High School 
to the football game to go support my son who's a coach. And at halftime, I go downstairs, I go to the concession stand, and I see an awesome man of God and his wife. I don't have to say their names, but they've been here a couple times. And I'm sitting down and I'm having a conversation, say hi to the wife, and she has her family in there, and I'm talking to the, the husband, and the husband introduces me to his dad. This is why I told y'all, y'all better be careful. Somebody's always watching me. And his dad begins to talk to me. I'm talking to him for a little bit. And he says, I know you. He said, I, I, I've seen you before. I don't know where, but God is doing something great. I don't know. I said, yeah, I mean, I'm a pastor. Over he said, I, I don't you. I know you. He said, you're a great man of God, and God is going to go on to do great things. And then he began to tell me, he was sitting in a, in a walker, uh, one of those little chairs, and he had a stroke some years back, and he can't, he can't walk well. And he's beginning to tell me that he wasn't there that God, and that God was using him. Come on, man, where, 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 where were we hearing this? What we dealing with day with that? But God sends me another one that I don't even know. And I say that to say this to you. People are watching, though. Watch what you say to people. And then it goes back to, it goes back to, yeah, we all laughing, joking, all that kind of stuff. It goes back, and this is where God, what it goes back to when you get cut off and you want to say those few choice words, right? And you, and you want to do all that. But Sister Karen, what did she say on Bible study? And you don't want, you don't, you don't really want to go through the process. Because the process, Sister Karen says, sometimes when you get like that, sometimes you got to go, well, maybe the, the people are, something might be going on with them. Maybe somebody hurt them, but I promise y'all, just like I tell y'all about shooting, you put your hand on the gun, cat, you, you grab, you get your grip, you get, you get your finger right, you get your sights lined up, you, 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 you breathe right, all of those things go on, but y'all don't know, it's just, to y'all, it's just bang. But I promise y'all, when I saw that man, all of that stuff you were saying was going through my head. Frank, as you approach him, don't, don't you say nothing else about Because there are people here! Watching you. And I don't want to put a bad name on God because I act like a fool. Thank you. I'm done. People say, stop acting. God says, stop acting like a fool. Stop acting like a fool. In every situation that you can't control, stop acting like a fool. Stop coming out of your mouth. Stop saying things that you can't take back because people are watching whether you see. I never saw that man in that will. I don't know who that man is. But he's been watching me for years, since 2015. So again, today I'm going to ask Praise and Worship to come up. I just thought that was just apropos. 39 years, God was processing me to get to the point on Friday to say, now I'm going to test you and see how you're going to act. Amen. And I want to see if you're going to pass the test. And because I passed the test, we got two, we got a new niece and a new nephew. And we got his, 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 his ex-wife, we got a new sister in Christ. Amen. She says she's going to be calling on us. She may come on Bible study. Praise and worship, come on forward. Amen. And bless us, brother. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless us, y'all. Good, Good morning. Good morning. We invite you to join us in praise and worship. Good to see everybody in the house of God today. Yeah. We're so glad that our little sweetie pie is back with us Amen. today. Amen. Uh, from her studies, good to see her and have her. And we just want to bless God. I mean, we've been talking about the goodness of God. We're going to keep on with that theme of the goodness of God. We're going to move with that. Amen? Amen. 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 Please join us. Oh. 
Thank you, God. Bless the Lord and all my soul and all that's within me. Bless the Lord. For God is my everything. How many can you say that God is your everything? Amen. 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 So we're going to uh, share this with you today and we hope that you will join us. Amen. Amen.
him, to praise him, to lift him. When we get to heaven, that's what our job is. So if you get tired down here, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven. <laughs> so we might as well just get ourselves pumped and primed and in shape for that. Amen? Amen. 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. <clears throat> Yes, 
Lord, bless us. Today. Well, the thing is this online and everybody else. 
is Rayana has been gone since around September. She's in school at Drexel in Philadelphia. And sometimes we got him here. And sometimes when you get out there on your own and you and in life, it just hit a little bit different. So you come here, you sing just a little bit different because you got you got the cares of the world, and now you can really glorify God. So I thank God for that. Even with the entire praise and worship, which y'all don't understand, is Minister Frank has been playing them drums since he was four years old, so he got a chance to go back to his first love. But what y'all might know, all that piano, he, 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 he arranged it. He played it last week, he arranged it, he taped it, he put all the fills in, and they said we're going to sing a song this week. Uh, 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 Sister Samaya has been singing with us forever since she was in high school, and she's still up there doing her thing. Um, Pastor Tacey has always been singing, she gave up preaching to sing, but she used to be a, a great singer, and um, um, yeah, yeah, singing to preach, and, and watch this, and and, um, and Sister Edwina, that's my baby right there, I thought she was going to go Rance Allen on me, yeah. I'll tell you, Rance, but I say all that to say this, y'all need to get back to y'all first love. When we have these lay services on the fourth Sunday, it's not just about somebody coming. When we first started, man, these are youth services. You got up here, if you could rap, if you could sing, if you could do a poem, as long as you was glorifying God, we was going to put you up there. Stop sitting on your gifts. I want to get back to that. If y'all can do something, come to us and let us know. We will incorporate it into the, the lay service. Uh, Nisha, your baby girl, when she did that little poem, I want her up here. This week, I want her talk that, yeah, baby, yeah, you. I saw you on, on, on TikTok and Instagram. I want you to do that same thing. She has gifts and she has talents. The way she got up there and articulated this, something about spilling blue paint, paint, paint all over the floor. And I was just, I was, it was incredible. So we want you guys to get back to that. Right now, as we transition, we want to welcome our first time visitors. If you are a first time visitor, would you please stand? Don't be shy, because if you don't stand, I'm going to call you out anyway. So please stand. I'll give you an opportunity to stand if you're a first time visitor. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us what your name is and who told you about us and how'd you get it? Omisha. Okay. And who, how'd you find out about us? She said, where are you going? That dude right there with that pool pit out in the range. Amen. Let's give Omisha a hand for you. Well, make sure you say that it's the first time that you come. You're a visitor, which you are. But man, if you come at any other time, you family. All right? So we welcome you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy our brand of worship. Amen? Now it is offering time in the house. Come on, y'all. Y'all get quiet. Y'all want to hear me? I said offering time. Y'all got quiet. Y'all, thank you. Doing rent out and all that kind of stuff. Come on, y'all. It's offering time in the house. It's time. I ain't like Mr. Mel. She all she. I'm just gonna come at you hard. Listen. Give God your best. Give God your best. Don't hold back on God. I told y'all with the story of me growing up in the church and the whole nine and. Just I thought that this whole thing was a gimmick, but I'm telling you, you can't beat God and get it. And it's not, and you're not giving God your tithe or offering to get anything in return. But when you are obedient and you give God your first fruit and you give God your best, He gives you back in ways that you can't even explain. I just talked about some of them today. So again, we we're not we're not one of those churches will hold three or four offerings, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to pressure you to give. You either going to give a year. I see you says you either going to give a year. And so uh, again, uh, if you are ready to pay your tithes and offering, there are envelopes in the back. If you are online, you can pay uh, at Perfect Will Ministries PO Box 823, uh, Bear Delaware 19701. Anybody need an envelope? Raise your hand. I don't want to miss anybody. Just raise your hand. There you go. We got a couple hands going up. Or you can go online at our site, perfectworldministries.org. As soon as you click on our website, uh, and, and bear with us, we're trying to update our website as well. But on this website, there's a, a little yellow button on all pages that says donate. So let's give God a hand praise for that. Amen. A couple of announcements on December the 7th. It's a Thursday, December the 11th is the following Thursday. 
at 6:30 at the um, at the at the care what was it called the care center dream, 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 dream center. center at the dream center we're going to again help those who are less fortunate we go there it's a it's a distribution center where you go and you can box up uh, non perishable goods if anybody is and please don't wait till the last minute I'm doing this a couple weeks early if you want to go please email me. And let me know that you want to be there. It's uh, two Thursdays. One is the seventh. One is the eleventh. I'm also. We'll probably put a sign up sheet too. And please honor your word. If y'all gonna do it, then seven fourteen. I'm sorry, but what is it? Seven and fourteen. Seven and seven and fourteen. Okay. Seven and fourteen. Please honor your word. And last year we had a ball. Just blessing everybody. And again, God, see, I just, I just, just told him I wasn't competitive. But last year we went there and we set a record of, of getting the most boxes done in the shortest amount of time. So I want to keep that record. Because I'm being competitive in boxing, baby. PWM walked out with the ring, baby. So anyway, anyway, if y'all want to do that, please let me know. Uh, please let somebody here know. And um, just email me. Just say, just uh, y'all got my email. Just email me say, I, I want to be a part of it. And um, we, we have a good time. It's from 6.30. What time are we normally out? By like hour, hour and a half. And it's a good time to go in there and pray. We got a little center over there. We pray. And then we just we get at it. We get the box. Amen. Amen. Who's ready for the word? <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now. Uh, children's service. And hold on. I got, I, we got some birthdays. Uh, before we do children's service, we're going to uh, bring up our birthday. Blessing to be in the house of God, no matter what the situation or circumstances that are going on in your life. Amen. And the pastor was telling me about the tithes. When you give God your first, He also blesses your family. You give Him your first fruits. I don't care if it's a dollar. And I'm a witness yes. that it works. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. I've been doing it for years. And everybody had their things to say about the time, but I'm telling you, I don't want for nothing. Amen. Okay? And you won't. And you'll bless your family too. Amen. 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 So now, Brother Greg, you've been there and everywhere, but your birthday was last week. But can you please come get your birthday card? Amen. Come on, All right, all right. Good to see you in the house. God bless each and every one of you. And also, Brother Marvin Butler. Amen. He's first That's this week, y'all. That's this week. Uh, I will call him my pain. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for birthdays. Give God a hand praise for the birthday. Right now we're going to release our children to Children's Church. Just as Samaya and Brother Darren will be, just follow them toward the children's service. How many ready for the word? Songwriter said it like this. He said, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Pastor Tixie, come on up Amen. and bless us with the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Amen. Bless the time of favor, I pray. Amen. All right, we're going to get to the word. Um, I want to, I'm continuing our series on the missional church. We're speaking about um, the foundation of the Christian church. Because a lot of times what happens is people get off to, to their own ideas and their own thoughts and their own agendas. And what we call church or, or the, the assignment of church becomes what somebody else wants. And we don't want to do what man wants. We want to do what God wants. God instituted the church, and we are the church, and God gave specific um, instruction. He gave us specific assignments. Uh, he demonstrated his approval in, in various ways, and we just want to stay in alignment with the word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's pray, and then we'll get to the word. 
Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We give you honor, glory, and praise, and we lift up holy hands in this place. And we ask you, God, to allow this word to penetrate hearts, minds, and spirits, that we will receive what thus saith the Lord concerning who we are and whose we are. God, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you're creator of the entire universe. Everything that we know and everything that we have yet to discover and may never discover, God, you have created it all. But God, you created us in your image. We bear your image. And you've given us your love, your grace, and your only son. So that we will not be estranged from you and that we will not be unable to be in relationship with you. Thank so you, God. God. Thank you. For thank you, God. Ultimate sacrifice that we have the gift and the privilege of salvation, but also the hope, the blessed hope of eternal life. So, Lord, as we go forth today in the word, speak, Lord, speak, I God. increase that this spirit will increase yes, and allow each one to receive their portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, when I was before you last, we talked about uh, Ananias and Sapphira, and they were two who were part of the early church. And basically, they lied and they tried to deceive the Holy Spirit mm. by uh, saying that they sold a piece of land uh -oh. for a specific amount and they didn't tell the whole truth. And so they were killed. Yeah. And it wasn't by man, but they deceived the Holy Spirit. And, and, and so there's a consequence when the church was in its early stages and the word was going forward and the church was growing, they decided for some reason to present as one thing and show up as something else. And so there was a consequence to that. If this thing we call the church and these people who were following the way, if that, if that move of God was con to continue, God has to deal with sin. How many understand God's got to deal with sin? Amen. He's a holy God. Yeah. He's got to deal with sin. And, and sometimes people want our God to be so loving that he will just allow anything because of his love. Nope. Well, we all know even in the natural, that doesn't work. You can love your children into being a totally unproductive, Come on. unhealthy, Come on. ungrateful, Follow. evil, entitled, spoiled child. Right? That's right. Yes. So when we love, we understand that in that love has to be some discipline. Yeah. In that love has to be some correction. That's right. It can't be a, just a, a one green flag, a green light, just go. Because we've all seen people who have had their own way. I haven't. Yes. And some of us can't really, if you want to be honest, can't even tolerate being in our presence sometimes because it's like dealing with a child. Mm -hmm. But we thank God for his no's when he says no. We thank God for his not right now. Ah. We thank God for his correction. Wait. Wait. We thank God for his chastisement because the word tells us you'll know your love because God will chastise his children. That's right. And so we can't judge the, the severity or the necessity of how God dealt with Ananias and Sapphira because we're not God. And sometimes the unchastised or uncorrected behaviors that are allowed to go could later cause greater damage. Mm. Mm. Come on. That's Come true. on. That's true. Because everything starts with a seed. Yeah, and it grows. And if you feed that seed and you put it in the conditions that are conducive for growth, ah. it will grow and bear a harvest. harvest. Come on. And so we can't just let things just grow up and spring up in our midst and not check to see what it is. Amen. Amen. So we will not try to put ourselves in the place of God and try to judge God for how he judged them because he made his word very clear. The instruction was clear and they decided to do something else for whatever their motive was. 
But we now, on the other side of this, reading the word and the fullness of what this what unfolded, now know that it's just best to just be honest and truthful in our dealings. Yes? Yes. 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 So I want to go forward today, and I want to continue in Acts chapter 5. The missional church, this plan is of God. This plan is of God. Mm -hmm. If we will go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And I want you to go down to uh, verse 12. When you're there, say amen. amen. I'm reading from the English Standard Translation. Acts 5, 12 says, Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. That's another temple, the second temple. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Somebody mm. say, all healed. All healed. all healed. And so, here's the thing that I wanted to share, even just looking at that particular frame of scripture. First of all, there was unity among the believers. There was unity. So there's their own one accord, right? The second thing is there's integrity in that body, in the, among the believers, because they were held in high esteem. To hold someone in high esteem is not to allow them to become some type of idol. It is just that you, you respect the God in them. Come on, right? come on. And so when they gather together here, we see that there is some corresponding um, Results of the people coming together in a way that's pleasing to God, right? There was increase in the body of believers. More and more people were added to this early church. More that's and more right. people came out. They heard the teaching. They heard the preaching. They believed the word. They confessed belief in the word. They received the gift of salvation. So it increased. Yes. And then... Here, when we go back and we look at it, we see that verse 12 tells us, this is an awesome thing to me. It says, now many signs and wonders were regularly done. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Miracles were occurring in the body of Christ among the believers, and they were done regularly. So there had to be something within that body that took seriously the commission and yes, the mission yes. of the church of preaching and teaching the word of God, living upright before him, and living integrity so that God would be pleased with their worship, with their praise, with their teaching, with their gathering. And so miracles were done regularly. And there are people this day who, 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 would, who would like to say that miracles are not for today. I beg to differ. Mm. Amen. I beg to differ. Come on. I have seen many miraculous things. Amen. And in the last several years, there, there have been many of them. And I believe God will do many more miraculous things. That's right. When we honor God, when we bless God, when we live upright before God, when we do what God has called us to do, when we come together as the body of Christ, when we uh, are unified, and when we are together in one place under one God, and God is pleased with what we are doing, God shows himself. Come on. Come on. Come on. God will always show up when, when we are blessing him and we are doing what we are we're called to do. And so I looked at that and I was like, wow, God. So we should not get to the place where every once in a while we hear about something that could be described as a miracle. We should be looking for the miraculous to occur each and every day. Yeah, man. And no, the miracle is not that you get some million dollars that just 
fell from, from the sky. Come on. Not those kind of miracles. The, those, the kind of miracles that honor God, that bring glory to Him. That's right. Amen. That's right. So it's not a selfish thing that we're looking for. We're looking for God to move in very real ways. That's right. Amen. 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 So let's go further. Verse 17. And I'm, I'm just going to um, sort of um, give you this portion because I want to land somewhere with it. Uh, Acts 5 17. Everything that's going on, the unity, the oneness of accord, the people being added to the number, the, the miracles that are going forth every day, the people of God being on one accord. And it says, but. It but. starts with but. But. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, and that's the party of the Sadducees, they were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in a public prison. And during the night, the angel of the Lord came and opened the prison doors and brought them out. He said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and they began to teach. And so when we look at this, we see that the Sadducees were motivated and they were provoked by jealousy. Well, who are the Sadducees? The Sadducees were a religious group. They were wealthy Jewish arist aristocrats. Uh, they had a lot of power and influence, and they lived um, very lavish lifestyles. Uh, they impacted much of the Jewish society, and they had a lot to do with the, the religious and the legal um, ways of the Jewish society. Uh, the one thing they did not have um, power over was the military. And uh, the Sanhedrin was considered the uh, governing um, body of those religious and legal matters. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to hear about the, the, the uh, theology of the Sadducees. Because everything that's coming in the name of God is not in the name of God. Uh -oh. the name of God. Well. That's right. And a lot of the Sadducees, in their wealth, they had these... Um, I want to say Roman benefactors. So there's people who are, are sort of kind of financially fueling your 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 position. Yes. Your yes. platform. Yes. Right? Yes. And so this is what the Sadducees believed. They had a strong belief in the first five books of the, the um the Bible, the Torah, Torah. the law, Torah. right? Mm -hmm. Um Old Testament, they were in strict adherence to that law. That's what they believed. They also rejected the idea of the supernatural. They didn't believe in the supernatural. Nope. They didn't believe in angels or the resurrection, nope. demons, heaven, or hell. They didn't believe in God. Yeah. <laughs> Sixto said. What's the word? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they didn't believe in any of that, right? They, and as a matter of fact, they believed that when the body dies, the soul dies with it. That's it. Mm. In the story. Yeah. That's what they believe. And they were really, really um, into uh, ritualistic uh, purity um, ceremonies. They yes. wanted to be ceremonially clean Tradition. because they want to be able to go into the temple and to perform services. And so that's what they believe. And as I was reading and studying it out, just refreshing my memory, um, there was one or two references of them believing in unrestrained free will. What does that look like? Yeah. That God has no role in the personal lives of human beings. Jesus! But they're coming in the name of God. We don't believe in Jesus. We don't believe in the Holy Ghost, right? But they were coming in the name of God. We're talking about the Sadducees, for those of you who are following online, because we believe all in Jesus and the Holy Ghost and God. Amen. But this is the theology of the Sadducees. Okay. They didn't believe in any of the things that marked the Christian church, yes. that marked the way, the life of a believer. Uh -huh. And so they, from their positions of power and wealth yes. and influence, were watching what the apostles were doing who had been instructed by Jesus in the church. 
They set off watching, and they, motivated by jealousy, they decided we need to lock them up. Why? Because they're messing with our position of influence and power. All of these people are being drawn to them, and all of these things that they're doing is make, taking all of the shine from us. So they put the apostles in jail. But somewhere in the middle of the night, Come on. The angel of the Lord came and told them, yeah. go and preach the word. That's right. And so that's what they did. They moved in obedience. They went out to preach the word. And when they went back, the, the guards were back the next day to go look for them. The jailhouse was empty. And so the word says in verse 24, the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words. And they were greatly perplexed about them. Well, you would be greatly perplexed about me, about us, if you don't know our God, our Jesus, our Holy Spirit. Right. You don't acknowledge them, right. you don't believe that they exist, and you don't even have that as a part of your life. And so, the jailhouse is empty. They went and found that the men were out teaching. The apostles were out teaching. And they standing in the temple just teaching the word of God. And look at verse 26. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force. That's right. For they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Watch how people move. Come on. Break it down. Because if your motive and your intention was right, and it was pure, and it was needed and necessary and really based on something truthful, you wouldn't have to pretend in a way. You would just go and take them into custody. But you, you move in pretension because you have a deeper Pretense. motive. Yes, yes, What's yes. That means you Pretense. come one way acting Pretense. one thing when you really want something else. Right. And so they, they were afraid of being stoned by the people. So they brought them in yeah. and they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them. Verse 28, he said, we strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you intend to bring this man's blood on us. Watch how they move because they take no responsibility for things that they are guilty of. They stand before you with bloody hands not only the things that they have done to bring about the shedding of blood, because they're talking about Jesus. Right. They had a part in the crucifixion and the death of Jesus. And so, fueled by jealousy, the religious leaders, after arresting them, told them, we told you not to do this. But here's the response, and I love the response. Verse 29, Peter answered, we must obey God rather than men. That's right. Say that again. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom yes. God has given to those who obey him. That's right. So when we obey God, this is the foundation of the church. So when we obey God, we have that gift of the Holy Spirit leading us into all truth, allowing us to discern and to see and to understand. Right? But this is what I wanted to stop with. He said we must obey God rather than man. Be clear about who you're following and why. Why? Okay. Why? Be very clear yes. about who you are following and why and you why. follow them. And why. You must know who they are, not just in lip service, but you must know who they are in integrity. You must know who they are and how they move and what they do and what they believe and who they represent. Yes. Someone can come and be very charismatic and they, you, can, you might have a lot of things in common, but just like these Sadducees, they don't know your God, nope. don't acknowledge your God, yeah. don't believe your God, yeah. don't walk with your God. 
and you have now aligned yourself with someone who can't even understand how you move. So the apostles were committed to obeying God. They were not focused on appeasing religious leaders or anyone else who opposed them. And you must know that there will be opposition. Anybody who opposes your faith is in opposition, not just to you, but to God. So they approached their assignment with singleness of heart, and they executed the instructions given to them to follow a man. Uh Hear me and hear me well. To follow a man or a woman with such dedication and commitment is idolatry. Come on, you're talking good, Pastor. They ain't gonna say no, but you're talking good. To follow a man or a woman you're talking good. with such dedication or commitment would be considered idolatry. Yes. Amen. You may as well bow to a statue. Yes, talking good, Pastor. You're talking good. Here's the thing. They were committed to the call. They were witnesses to the crucifixion of Jesus. They were witnesses to the power of the Holy Spirit being released into the world. And they were recipients of the indwelling Spirit of God. They taught and they preached the word in obedience to God. And some things happened because of that. Two things happened. Because of the position that they took and because of their execution of what God had called for them in the church, they became the object of hatred and persecution. So people of God, stop looking for this little cushy place where nothing goes wrong and nothing happens and you're not facing opposition and you're not dealing with things that that are just downright uncomfortable and things that you don't want to deal with. Because that's not the walk that we're on. And the second thing that occurred was, and most importantly, was when they did what they were called to do, they did it with singleness of heart and devotion, God was glorified. The church grew because people began to hear the word, receive the word, confess their sin, and receive the gift of salvation. So what I'm saying to you is this walk of Christianity is not one that is easy, but when we do it the way God has ordained that we do it, you will see that God is glorified and lifted up and more people will come along and, and take, a, take the walk be on this journey with us. Amen. So, and I got to go back again. As believers, we are not to idolize anyone. We are not to idolize anybody that's called to lead or called to serve. Come on. Correct. Correct. We do not idolize people lead, leading or called to serve the body of Christ. But what we are called to do is respect the call on their lives Amen. and follow the word Amen. of God. Amen. That's what we're called to do. want to make that very clear. Some people get lost in um, personalities and charisma. Some people get enthralled with the giftings of those who lead and those who serve because you were a prophet. Now all of a sudden, you know, everybody wants to lean in or you're an intercessor and they know that you've been praying for them and some of the prayers that have been prayed have been answered or because they are psalmists and they just bless God and they're anointed to do it or they are awesome evangelists. I don't care what the gift is. You don't idolize the gift. You idolize the giver of the gift. You don't idolize the person that who carries the gift. You honor God. Amen. True. So. <laughs> Come on, keep it coming. I just want y'all to sit with that for a minute. No, because sure. people get confused and people get yes, mixed up. I'm sure. Yes, they do. And we should not. <laughs> and we should not. That's why you're in and out. 
I'm telling y'all right now, I know I'm not all together, brother. Don't put me on no kind of pedestal because I'm going to fall. I'm going to jump off first before I fall. Because I know it's only a matter of time before I fall because I'm a human being. I am not God. I'm following the same God that you're following. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to come up short. I'm going to have an attitude on a given day. And if you push me hard enough, you might see something come out of me that I thought I had conquered to overcome. Yes. So I don't want nobody. I, I get really, really like I, like people who be like, "Oh, Pastor, you just no, 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 no." The me that I know, the me that me and God know, that girl needs some work. Come on. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we keep things with. First things first, keep things in proper perspective. I will not bow to anybody but God. Amen. Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 So, let's move forward. Verse 33. I'm almost done. When they heard this, they were enraged and they wanted to kill the apostles. But the Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. Send them away, he said. And he said to the men of Israel, take care what you're about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody. And the number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed. And all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean yes. rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people with him. He too perished. And all who followed him were scattered. Here's wise counsel. He said, so in the present case, I tell you, Keep away from these men and let them alone. Mm. Okay. For if this plan is this, or for if this plan or this undertaking is of man, meaning humanity, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found Jesus. opposing God. Wise counsel. Wise counsel. He was among those religious leaders telling them, this is what you all need to really consider. And so what am I saying to you? There will be opposition. There will. Not so much against us personally, but the God that we serve. Yes. We are not on the kind of time to take the opposition personally. We should not be taking offense to people opposing and questioning our God. Because our assignment is to continue the work of spreading the gospel. Amen. Preaching and teaching the word of God to the world. Telling them about the love of God and his plan of salvation. This plan is of God. This plan is of God. So... Allow God to deal with those people who oppose the message that we carry uh -huh. and that we share with others. This journey has nothing to do with our comfort. It has nothing to do with us living a life free of problems. Because okay. when the truth hits the fan and it all comes down to it is this. We all will experience opposition and it comes in many forms. Yes. Persecution. Come on. Rejection. Yeah. Ridicule. Yeah. Abandonment. Mm -hmm. False accusation. Come on. Betrayal. Ooh. Imprisonment. And abuse of every kind. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's just the short list. And if I took a survey right now and asked you, raise your hand if you could experience at least one of those things. There's nobody in here that's exempt. So guess what? This walk is not a walk of ease and a walk of comfort. And so here's the thing. we got to understand that God is our vindicator. He will go before us and he will destroy our enemies. 
God will stand up before us and he will remove our opposers. You already went, the word is already very clear about what happened to those who rose up. They started a movement, but it was, it was, it was their thing, not God's thing. And so what happened as a result? The leader was killed and the people who followed them were scattered. And the plan did not unfold. And so Camilio gave sound sage counsel. Leave them alone. Yes. Because if this is a man thing, it's going to fail. Yes. So we know what happened to them. And we know that how God will show up when we have our detractors. Detractors are just people who disparage something or someone. They're going to find something wrong with something no matter what. Those are detractors. Mm, mm, mm. They sit at the sidelines, they judge and criticize oh. everything to try to take away from what God is doing and who God is, but they'll never be able to do it. So we don't even have to engage in those kind of um, debates because we're not arguing the word of God because we stand 10 toes down on the word of God. And those who oppose us, that's fine because our job is to win souls and build disciples. God will clean them up. Yes. It's not our job to do that. Thank you. This plan is of God and it will not fail. I don't care what the culture tells you. I don't care what social media tells you. I don't care what platforms are being uh, pushed to the forefront and trying to convince people that wrong is right and right is wrong. I do not care what they say or how they frame it or what they package it in. This plan will not fail. God in all of heaven is backing this plan. And if you watch down through the years, we have seen people rise to prominence. Businesses rise to prominence. Oh. They come and they go. Yes. They get as big as they want to get, and then they're no more. We've seen people they at the height of everything and on one hand, and later on, you don't even whatever happened to them. This plan will not fail. And here's the last thing I want to leave you with. And it's not this not even one of those messages where you get all jumping and shouting. But it's a sobering message to make you really sit down and reflect and think about why are we the church and what are we called to do and what did God say about it and what could potentially happen as we carry this good news and we follow up through with this commission, right? Because we have seen, how many people have seen all kinds of stuff happen in church? And some of the stuff you take a step back and you just shake your head. You go, I don't know mm -hmm. about that. Sometimes we've been, we sometimes you have been to churches where, okay, you'd be like, Lord, I know I ain't, I ain't in my word like that, but this don't sound like nothing that you said. This don't look like nothing you said, right? That's why we are here talking about the foundation of the church. Because a long time, a long dispensation, a long um, centuries since the, the early church, people have risen up and come up with all these ideas and all these platforms and all these ways and all these models and all of these doctrines, false doctrines, to try to draw people off course from what God has really said. And when you are working according to what God has said and doing what God has said and being the body like God has said, there are regular miracles, there's unity, there's nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. People are being healed and God is being glorified. And people are being saved day by day by day by day by day. Last part and I'm done. After all of this happened, They left the presence of the council. And how did they leave the presence of the council? Of the people who were telling them, we charge you not to preach and teach in this name. Ah. The word says they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. 
and every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. So why do we leave it here? Why do we end here? Because persecution should not stop us from preaching and teaching this word. Rejection should not stop us. Abandonment should not stop us. Discomfort should not stop us. We should be glad to be called his, and we should be glad to know that, just like Jesus, we're going to suffer some stuff. But laid up for us is a crown of glory in heaven when the work down here is done. Amen. 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 So I just want to share that with you today. This plan will not fail. It will not fail. And so when we're doing what we're called to do, watch God show up. Watch God be present. Watch the miracles. Watch the signs. Watch the wonders. Listen for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you have the written record of what you designed for the church to be, to do, and how we are to move, and how we are to interact one with another, and how we are to be in the world, and uh, sharing this good news, this gospel, preaching and teaching. We thank you, God, that we know that we have overcome because Jesus has overcome, and it's only possible through him. So, Lord, allow us to continue to move forward as church to do what you've called us to do to the glory of God, to the winning of souls, and to the saving of lives, and to the building of disciples for the glory of God. Strengthen our resolve. Strengthen our commitment to use our gifts, our callings, our talents, our resources to further the work of the kingdom. Allow us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit so that none will be lost, that God has identified as his. Use us as tools and vessels for your glory. And God, in times when we suffer persecution and hardship and, and heartache, we ask God that you would remind us that you are with us, that you never leave us, that you never forsake us, and that you always have our good at hand. We thank you for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And all of these things, we thank you. In the name of our Lord and Savior. Amen.